So, uh, you want to talk about this? A few moments later. Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. And welcome back to my workshop. So, I think we know why we're here today, but, uh, what do you think this is, or what was it? Well, if you guess lens cap, you're spot on. It was the lens cap to the spotting scope from my wife's telescope. So this actually mounts on the side of the telescope. It looks in the same direction that the telescope is looking in, and it has a much wider field of view than the telescope itself and a smaller magnification. So let's say you're trying to look at the moon or a planet in the middle of the night. Um, you can find it in the spotting scope first, get it roughly in the center of the view of the spotting scope, and then when you look through the larger telescope um, that has a much smaller field of view, you know, hopefully that object is in the view of the telescope or it's close enough um, that you can, uh, you know, get it into the center of the view. And that lens cap goes uh, on the front here and covers this, uh, this front element. So there's a couple different ways that we could design a new lens cap for this. I think the easiest and quickest thing to do would be to just draw a cylinder, um, draw a counter bore in that cylinder in CAD, um, export it, hit print, and we're probably done in 20 minutes. We, we might have to do two or three till we get a good fit on the OD of this to the ID of that lens cap. Uh, but I'd like to take it a step further. Uh, this is a nice telescope. Uh, if we do that, you know, that simplest design, we're going to be, the face that you're going to touch and see is going to be the face that goes down on the print bed. And I really am not a big fan of the appearance of the uh, the, the print surface that you get on your first layer down on the bed from the smooth PEI sheet. I love the smooth PEI sheet from a functionality perspective, uh, but it tends to give you a surface finish that reflects light unevenly. So as you look at the part in different light, um, from even from layer to layer, it just, it doesn't have a good finish. So and I understand this is a functional print channel, right? But aesthetic does matter um, as part of the larger design. And I just, I don't want to do that here. I don't think it's, I, I don't think it, it meets the, the same appearance and quality of the rest of the telescope. So I'm thinking that we either have to do this printed um, this way instead and have supports inside, which is going to be a mess to clean out. I'm not so much worried about the aesthetic of the inside. Um, obviously we'd see, you know, sort of a different surface finish on the inside after we break those supports off. Uh, I'm more worried that if we try and get close to the edge with those supports, um, we're also going to mess with the surface finish on the inside diameter, which again, I don't care about the aesthetic on the inside, but I do care about the fit, right? This is a nice smooth machined aluminum. So we need to have a nice consistent surface finish on the inside diameter of this cap uh, to fit down on here. So what I'm thinking is, what if we do this as two pieces? What if we do the sides of the lens cap as one piece and the top um, as another piece and they either glue together or snap together uh, in some fashion. So let me get some measurements of this and uh, we'll fire up uh, CAD and see what we can come up with. All right, and here is the design that I came up with. So after I stopped recording, I went and I added this, these concentric circles here on the top just to uh, just to give it a bit more of an appeal. Um, and it might look like one piece. This is actually two. Let me go ahead and hide this piece. So there is an outer ring, as uh, as I had discussed, um, you know, with my plan for the design here, and it is beveled. Uh, this is the bottom here. This will be the edge that prints, um, you know, down on the print bed. And there's a bevel here, bevel at the top. There is an inset here at the top, purely aesthetic. And you notice there is a bevel on the inside here to retain our ring um, at the top, hopefully. Anyway, um, I feel like that's plenty big enough to uh, mechanically retain that in there. Uh, now, my thought is that 
we can print the that inside piece or that top piece uh, large enough that we press it into place and it stays in there. If not, we can always glue it a bit, but I think just pressed in, it should be good enough. So if I bring back the top piece, it's a little bit hard to see. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll hide, we'll hide the outer part. See the top piece uh, has a matching bevel on it. So this bevel rides up against the bevel in the outside uh, ring. Um, and then there's some additional thickness in here just to give us, uh, so that this isn't flimsy. Um, and like I said, I added these concentric circles. They may actually add to the strength uh, a little bit, um, just the increased walls we have here versus infill, but they are purely aesthetic. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and hit print. All right, so it took me three tries, uh, just printing out the outside disc until I was satisfied with the fit. The first one was way too tight. I could force it on there, but it's not gonna be functional. And yeah, I mean, I guess we could try and sand this guy, but I mean, this is like a 10 minute print. So uh, next one ended up being way too big. Uh, it's just, you know, it falls off. Uh, third one, I am pretty happy with the, uh, with the fit. However, uh, Looking at this, I'm realizing that once I print the disc and have it in here, that I really don't have quite as much engagement on the end um, as I would like. I like the amount of engagement that we have, um, but keep in mind once we print the, uh, the disc that fits inside here, uh, it's gonna be further out. So I adjusted the design a little bit higher, and I printed two different versions of the disc until I was satisfied with the fit. And when I say satisfied with the fit, basically just a press fit of the disc uh, down into here up against that beveled shoulder um, at the top. And I thought that was good and I showed it to my wife and, um, you know, thinking it was plenty strong enough. And within a matter of seconds, she managed to push the disc uh, out of the, uh, the ring. I think I was just subconsciously not putting a lot of force on that disc because I knew I just pressed it into place there. Um, but the way she put it on, um, she immediately... Uh, you know, forced it out of position. So went back to the drawing board a bit and thought, well, I could design the fit closer or I could glue it. So I tried gluing it, um, super glued it in fact, and it's plenty functional. Uh, it actually fits really well now and the super glue sealed up that joint. So now um, it's actually hard to pull on and off quickly because it's got such a tight seal. Uh, but I don't like the fact that there is uh, glue residue on the inside and it's not just an aesthetic issue. I don't know if the lights picking that up um, I'm a little bit worried that the the glue residue uh, Might rub off a little bit and end up as kind of like a super glue dust on this front element So I thought okay. Well, what if I designed a little bit of a step in the side of uh, Of this and you know what I'll just I'll show you the design here because it's really hard to see in the actual model uh, but I designed a step up here in the end so that hopefully we can press the, the front disc past that and it snaps into place. And that is this guy here. And it actually worked really well in one regard. Um, it snapped into place. I can't actually push it back out, um, at least with any normal amount of force. I'm sure if I got a hammer, I could probably knock it back out of there. Uh, but there's a little bit of movement. Hear that, that creaking sound? It's moving, probably about point, somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters. And you also notice it just taking it on and off because the when you're putting it on, uh, the air pushes it out. And when you're taking it off, uh, the vacuum uh, or lower air pressure inside um, sucks it in. So, uh, I mean, we're already down the road of uh, trying to make this as perfect as we can. So I'm gonna do one more revision that I hope gets us all the way there. Uh, by moving uh, that little indentation, um, or sorry, that ring on the inside uh, closer to the front a little bit so that as we go past it, it locks it in place between that ring and that bevel in the front. And that is on the printer right now. It is probably just about done. So let me, uh, let me go grab it. All right, let's see how this fits. So this should be the right diameter for a slip fit on the scope. Yep. Now this should be a tight fit uh, inside here. It should be able to be pressed in. Yep, yeah, it just, 
It's a nice pressure fit in there, uh, but it's not strong enough uh, to stay in place without that ridge. So let's pop it all the way down. What I'm hoping for is a satisfying click when we get to the end and then it's locked in place. Oh, it's still got a little bit of play in it. I know I should just let this go. It's so close to perfect. But I feel, I feel like it's got to be exactly perfect. All right. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the camera rolling when I clicked it into place there, but it fell into place with a very satisfying uh, click sound, just like the last one, except now it's actually locked in place and doesn't move around at all. So I guess, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh time's the charm. So, all right. Um, so, you know, I know I you know, went a lot further on that than I needed to. But uh, this telescope actually lives in the corner of our living room. So now every time I walk past this guy, I'll look at that lens cap and I will know that I did my very best in designing a replacement for this. And I am really very satisfied with the end result. So, all right, guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me this week in the shop. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. Also tells YouTube what you like, so you're gonna see more stuff like this. And if this is your first time on the channel, I do a new video like this every single Friday uh, that either repairs something, uh, improves the functionality of something, or is just a brand new from scratch design that does something functional. Uh, so if you enjoy that sort of thing, consider hitting the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I will see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.